He mamam kam kai kai mau kedim hedim tukum lukum he 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 tutong he 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 amam kam kam kai mau kedim hedim tukum lukum he 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 tutong he 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 Welcome to Lesson 5 in the Mountain Mighty Language class. Today we'll add to our dialogue that we've been building and also start using action verbs in Maidu. We'll also learn how to identify the subject of a sentence, which turns out to be very important in Maidu. So let's start with our dialogue. Have you been practicing? Let me ask you and you answer. Ha ha. I hope you said ha ha. Hesasaka. I hope you answered Yahakas Anomi. Hesasakare Minki Koroidi. I hope you answered Yahakan. Hesasakare Minki Heskaton. I hope you answered Yahakan. Oka. I hope you answered Hee. Help, hell kit. I hope you answered Nikki Hati Ankano. Okay. For your own language fluency, I hope you memorize both sides of the dialogue, person A and person B, and try practicing with someone without looking at your notes. Now we're going to add to the dialogue. When somebody's at the door, you call out Homone Makare. Who is it? Homone Makare. Repeat. Homonim makare. Then you answer with your name. You could just say your name like in English. I could say Karen Kakan. Or I could Maiduize it. For example, my name is Karen, but there's no R in Maidu. So my Maiduized name is Kaleni. If you have any R's in your name, change change them to L's. If you have any F sounds in your name, change them to P's. If you have a V in your name, you can change it to B or W. If your name ends in a consonant like mine, Karen, you add an I, an E sound at the end. Karen becomes Kaleni. Now, if someone asks me, Homone Makare, who is it? I answer Kalenenkakan. It is Karen. We don't usually say I am Karen when someone asks who is it. We say it is Karen if your name's Karen. Kalenenkakan. So try my doing your own name, then add an M and say Kakan after it. Kalenenkakan if your name's Karen. So let's practice. First, knock on someone's door and they ask, Homone makare. Kalenenkakan is what I say. What will you say? Then I say yutin, come on in, and ask the regular greeting questions. But this time, when I ask oka, are you hungry? You can answer wee, no. Then you could say hesmen pekas, I already ate. Hesmen means already. Pekas means eight. Repeat. We has men pekas. We has men pekas. Be sure to practice the dialogue and we can add to it each time. So, so far we've been practicing asking Hesim Makare, what is it? And Hesan Ben Makare, how many are there? And hesawinim makare, what kind is it? And all of these questions are answered with the verb kakan, it is, or they are. There's really no action involved in kakan, but it is a verb. You might say it's a verb of being. I like to call it an equal sign verb because it functions like an equal sign. It is a woman. It is green. They are five. You can picture the is and are as an equal sign. But today we're going to start using action verbs. Even though we call them action verbs, and some of them don't involve 
a whole lot of action. You could be sitting, standing around, or living somewhere, but we call all these action verbs. So we've learned okas, I am hungry. And that is an action verb, even though it doesn't seem like much action. Do you remember the question, oka, are you hungry? And the answer was, he'e, okas. Remember the verb yaha, be good, and how you said, I am good? What did you add on the end of yaha to say, I am good? Kas, yaha kas, I am good. And remember, when someone asks, Hesasakare, you answer, Yahakan. Yahakan. So you are adding kan to the end of the verb, Yaha, when you want to say, they are good, or he or she is good. Most of the words in the dictionary are in a basic form without endings, just like in the English dictionary. I can go to the English dictionary and find the word walk in English, but they don't bother to put walked, walks, or walking in the dictionary because they figure I know how to add those endings. So they just put the basic word. In our Maidu dictionary, we too just have the basic form of the word, or you could call it the root of the word, and you have to know how to add the endings. You say, Okas, I am hungry. So what do you think the basic verb for be hungry is? If you take off that kas ending or that ka question, what's the basic verb there for be hungry? Well, you're going to subtract that ending, kas, and the basic verb is ok. Ok, it includes a k. That's why there's two k's in that word. Now take the verb soul, sing. Soul is the basic form found in the dictionary. Sometimes I call it the root. And with no ending at all, it means you're telling somebody to do it. Soul means sing. To say he sang or she sang, you add the con ending. Soul con. He, she, or it sang or they sang. So listen to Mame Gallagher say he or she sang. Sulka. To say, I sang, do you know how to add an ending to say, I sang? You're going to add kas. Sol kas, I sang. Listen to Lena Benner say, I sang. Sol kas. Sol kas. Sol kas. Now, do you remember how to make it into a question if you want to ask, did you sing? What kind of ending are you going to put on soul? Soul ka. Did you sing? What if you wanted to ask, did he sing? What kind of ending will you put on soul? Soul kare. Soul kare. Did he sing? Also means, did she sing? Did they sing? Now, do you remember the verbs bedoy kit and tustoy from when we were singing the counting song? They said tustoy and had everybody stand up and then bedoy kit, sit down. Remember, the basic form of the verb is telling somebody to do something. So if you have it with no endings, that's what you're doing. So we, we use these action verbs with no endings when telling somebody to sit down or stand up. Bedoy kit, sit down. Tustoy, stand up. Now, how do you think you would say, they sat down? What ending would you add? First of all, you take the word, bedoy kit, sit down. And you want to say, they sat down? What are you going to add? Con, so it's going to be bedoy kit con. Bedoy kit con. And how do you think you would say, I stood up? You take the word stand up, tustoy, and what are you going to add on the end? Kas. Tustoy kas. Repeat. Tustoy kas. I stood up. Now, how do you think you would say, the children sang? Remember, 
soul is saying. You remember how to say children. Mumtetete is children, the children. Now, in this sentence, the children are doing the action. They're doing the singing. The action is singing. So the ones doing it are the children. That means the children is the subject of the sentence. This is very important in Mighty. Why? Because the subject of the sentence gets an M on the end. So instead of mumtetete, it's going to be mumtetetum when it's the subject, the ones doing the action. So then, mumtetetum, the children. Then there's the verb soul sang. And then you're going to put the gan ending, showing they sang. So repeat the sentence meaning the children sang. Mum tetatum sol gan. Mum tetatum sol gan. Hell. Now let's practice with another verb. Tete play. Now you might remember tete is big. So be sure to pronounce this word a little differently. Tete. Hear how I'm saying the first part louder? Tata is play. Tata is big. So repeat. Tata. Now, how would you say they played? I'm gonna add an ending. Tatacon. Repeat. Tatacon. They played. Or it could be he played or she played. Now let's add a subject, dog. How would you say the dogs played? Remember the word for dogs? Weapon sum tetacon. Repeat. Weapon sum tetacon. Or you could say, mum weapon sum tetacon. The dogs played. Okay? Now, why does Wepamsum have an M at the end? Because Wepamsum is doing the action of playing. It's the subject of the sentence. Now, how about if you wanted to say instead of the dogs played, the little girl played. Remember the word, word that we use for a little girl? Tibim kalempabem. Tibim kalempabem. Or you could say, Tibim Kalem Tem, either one, the little girl. So we put an M on the end because she's doing the action of playing. And then add Tatakan, she played. So repeat the sentence, Tibim Kalem Pabem Tatakan. Tibim Kalem Pabem Tetakan. Or you could say, Tibim Kalem Tem Tetakan. When saying a sentence, notice the action, which is the verb, and then who's doing the action, and that's the subject. And the subject of the sentence must end in M. Let's learn some more action verbs. Later, I'm going to go back and ask you, what are they doing? So try to learn these verbs. So, uno, uno, walk, or it can mean travel. Repeat, uno. How would you say, I walked? Uno cas, uno cas. How would you say, he walked? Uno can, uno can. How would you tell someone, walk? Uh, no. Uh, no. Wetem means dance. Repeat, wetem. How would you say, the men danced? You could say either mum mightem or just mightem. Wetemkan. Remember, we have to change that M on wetem to an ng sound before that Gone ending. So, mightem wetenkan. Mightem wetenkan.
the men danced, or some men danced. Ma, drink. Ma. How would you say, I drank? Mo kas. Mo kas. How would you say, did he drink? This is the question ending. Remember? Mo kare. How would you say, the bird drank? Remember the word for bird? Mum kutatum mo kan. Mum kutatum mo kan. Tui, sleep. Repeat. Tui. How would you say, did you sleep? Remember that question ending for you? Tui ka? Repeat. Tui ka? Did you sleep? How would you say that good old man slept? Do you remember the word for old man? Waisim? Now add. Mum yaham waisim. That good old man. Mum yaham waisim. Tuikan, tuikan. Repeat. Mum yaham waisim tuikan. That good old man slept. Pa, eat. Remember in pa o kit? So, repeat. Pa, that's eat. So, how would you say that group of people ate? Remember how to say a group of people? Mum maidam bomom. Mum maidam bomom is that group of people. So how would you say that group of people ate? Mum maidam bomom pe kan. Repeat. Mum maidam bomom pe kan. Now, I wonder if you've noticed that some of these verbs that are really short in their basic form have an accent or stress mark over the vowel, and some don't. You may be wondering, why would you even need a stress mark when the word is so short? Remember, the stress mark shows which part of the word to say louder. But if there's only one part to the word, what is the point of the stress mark? Well, Sol has a stress mark, but pe and mo do not. The answer is that when you add the endings like kas and kan, you'll know which part to pronounce louder. For example, sol has a stress mark over the o. That means you keep the stress on the sol because it has a stress mark. So it's sol kan, not sol kan, sol kan, sol kas. Sol ka when you're asking the question. But pa does not have the stress mark. And so when you add kan, you're going to say kan louder. You're going to say pe kan, pe kas, pe ka, like that. And the same with mo, drink, mo kas, mo kan. So there is a reason why some of the short, short words in the dictionary have a stress mark over them. You saw sol, sol kas for sol with the stress mark and mo kas from mo with no stress mark. So now you try it. There's a very short verb in my do that's just the letter a, a. Repeat, a. This means say. There's no stress mark. So how would you say I said? Akas, akas, and how would you say he said? Akan, 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 akan. So with no stress mark over the a, you're gonna say 
the next syllable louder. Okay, let's go on to some more action verbs. Wille means run. Repeat. Wille. So how would you say the dog ran? Mum wepom sum wilekan. Mum wepom sum wilekan. Or if you left mum off, it means a dog ran. So you remember why we added that M to wepomsa? Because wepomsa is doing the action of running. So it's a subject and it needs an M. So repeat. Wepom sum wilekan. Wepom sum wilekan. Yo titit doi. Yo titit doi means leaf out and bud out. Talking about a plant, like in spring. Do you see the word flower, yo, and the word green, titit, in this word? Yo titit doi. Repeat. Yo titit doi. How would you say, it is leafing and budding out? Let's listen to Mame Gallagher say, it is leafing out, leafing and budding out. Yo titit doi gan. Yo titit doi gan. How would you say, the tree is leafing and budding out? Mum cham yo titit doi kan. Mum cham yo titit doi kan. Weya. Weya means speak. Hear that long weya. The first E is long. Weya. Speak. How would you say the leader spoke? Remember the leader or chief? Yaponi. Now to say the whole thing. Mumya ponim weyakan. Repeat. Mumya ponim weyakan. The leader spoke. Remember when I mentioned a while back that whether you put an M on a word or not can change the meaning completely? Here's an example. You learned hesim makare. What is it? Now we're going to learn hesi makare. Believe it or not, that means what are they doing? So how does a missing M take us from what is it to what are they doing? If you strip off gare, you get the verb root ma. Ma can either mean is or do. When you use hesi what with an M on the end, that's hesim, you're asking about the subject what is. But without the M, has see what is not the subject. And so we're not asking who or what is doing. We're asking about the action itself. Has see makare. We'll learn a little more about this in lesson six. Now we're going to practice. I'm going to show you a picture of an action and I'm going to ask, has see makare. What are they doing? I want you to answer with an action verb that has gone in on the end. For example, here's a picture. Hesi makare. And if you remember the word we just learned for dance, watem, you're going to say watenkan. He or she danced. Now remember, I had to change that M to an ng sound before the kan ending. So repeat, watenkan. Wetenkan. He or she or they danced. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that verb you gave me, wetem, and I'm going to ask who is dancing. Now, remember, we learned homonym in today's dialogue. Who is it? Homonym makare. But now we're going to stay homonym wetenkare. I'm taking that wetem you gave me and I'm turning it into another question. Homonim wetenkade. Who is dancing? That's what that means. So, you're going to answer the question in Maidu. Tell me who is doing the action. When you answer the question homonim, 
you're telling me the subject of the sentence. Who is doing the action? So what do you think you have to do? You have to put an M on the end. You're going to make a new sentence using your answer. So, for example, if I ask homonim wetenkare, who is dancing, your answer could be mum maidam bomom. Mum maidam bomom. And then you're going to want to say wetenkan. Mum maidam bomom wetenkan. Now we're going to practice with more pictures. Here's a picture. Hesi makare. This is your new verb, tete, to play. So I hope you answered tete kan. They are playing. Homonim tete kare. Who is playing? I hope you said, Wepam sum tetakan. Repeat, Wepam sum tetakan. The dogs are playing. Here's a picture. Hesi makare. I hope you said, Tuikan. He is sleeping. Homonim tuikade. Homonim tuikade. Who is sleeping? Pebem tuikan. You answer. Repeat. Pebem tuikan. Or you could have said, Tem tuikan. Pebem and tem both mean child. Tem tuikan. Or you could have answered. Or you could have put mum in front of that. Mum pebem tuikan. Mum tem tuikan. Esi makare. I hope you said pekan. He's eating. Homonim pekare. Pebem pekan. Hesi makare. I hope you said solkan. She sang. Homonim solkade. Homonim solkade. Kalempa bem solkan. Kalempa bem solkan. Repeat. Kulem pebem solkan. Hesi makare. I hope you said badoikit kan. Homonim badoikit kare. Maidem badoikit kan. Repeat. Maidem badoikit kan. Hesi makare. I hope you said tustoi kan. Homonim tustoi kare. Homonim tustoi kare. Maidem tustoi kan. Repeat. Maidem tustoi kan. Hesi makare. I hope you said mokan. She's drinking. Homonim mokade. Homonim mokade. Kalem mokan. Kalem mokan. Repeat. Kalem. Mokan. Hesi makare. Unokan. I hope you said. Homonim unokade.
Mum Kalem, Mum Wepom Sum, Anokan. See how we're expressing a woman and a dog? We're repeating mum for each one. So repeat after me. Mum Kalem, Mum Wepom Sum, Anokan. Mum kalem, mum wepam sum, anokan. Hesi makare. I hope you said, wilekan. Homonim wilekade. You could say, maidem wilekan. Or you could say, Baedekim maidem wilekan. Remember the word Baedekim, young? So repeat after me, Baedekim maidem wilekan. Or you could say, Mum Baedekim maidem wilekan. Hesi makare. Hope you said, Yo titit doikan. Yo titit doikan. Homonim yo titit doikare. Remember the word for branch of a tree? Pa ka. The answer is pa kam yo titit doikan. Repeat. Pa kam yo titit doikan. Esi makare. Weyakan. Homonim weyakade. Kutatum weyakan. Repeat. Kutatum weyakan. Try this in your class or with your study buddy. Show pictures or point to actions happening around you. You probably have to look up a lot of words in the dictionaries. Ask, Hesi makare? And let the other person answer about the action. Then ask, Homonim, who's doing it? And put kare at the end of the action verb, like we just did. This is good practice in asking asking and answering questions and putting the right endings on the words. Another game is to show pictures and ask Hesi makare or Hesim makare and see if people notice whether you're saying Hesim or Hesi and see if they are answering the right question. For example, here's a picture. If I ask Hesi makare, what would you answer? Hesi makare means I'm asking about the action, and the answer could be weyakan, he spoke. But what if I ask hesim makare, then what would you answer? Hesim makare means I'm asking what is it, and the answer could be yaponenkakan, it is a leader. You could make it even more challenging once you know the basics and ask Hesawinim Makare, what kind of kalem, mitem, or tetatum is doing the action, and add some description in your answer. In the next lesson, we'll learn when not to add M to words. Like I said before, this is probably the most difficult thing to master about Maidu, and even if you know a lot about the language, you're going to screw up and you just have to correct yourself and keep going. But it's so important to being able to speak the language coherently and understand the recordings. Kanim aikate. Chamakas min chaimen. Yahat bispada.